from the Cosmologos Institute, a school of idealist philosophy, spirituality, and hermetic wisdom. We present an episode from the series, Universal Symbolism and Sacred and Mystical Art. It all begins with a dream and a glimpse into the pathway to the great beyond. This painting, Jacob's Ladder, is one of many artworks by Marc Chagall based upon the biblical theme of divine ascent. In this painting, the Old Testament Jacob dreams of seeing a celestial ladder rising before a town, offering a ray of bright hope as it soars through the darkness. In his dream, Jacob receives a vision of the hierarchical nature of the cosmos, seen as a grand stairway upon which many angels descend and ascend, traveling between earth and the heavens. In the biblical account, Jacob has his dream out in the countryside. The book of Genesis states, when Jacob reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. He had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with its top reaching to heaven and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord stood above the stairway and Jacob said, and this is the gate of heaven. The path to heaven, which Jacob saw, has been translated as being either a ladder or a stairway. This rather literal illustration of the event was created by the 19th century artist, Gustave Doré. The day after his visionary dream, Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillow and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he said, this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. In archetypal alchemical terms, I think of the stone Jacob rests upon as being equivalent to the philosopher's stone, which represents the transformative Logoic key to understanding the greater cosmos and the eternal soul. It provides the founding pillar upon which the whole world of creation rests. Such a hierarchical conception of the cosmos, as suggested in Jacob's dream, found full expression in the work of Christian Hermetic philosophers of the Renaissance. Linked to this hierarchical conception, is the belief that the lower physical world corresponds to or reflects a larger universal order, as represented in the letters of God's name, the Tetragrammaton. Such a cosmic conception is described in the works of the philosopher Robert Flood and in the diagrammatic illustrations to his books. His work, History of the Macrocosm and Microcosm, shows the whole of the cosmos to be a reflection of but a few unchanging universal principles. This universal hierarchical order is expressed in the illustrations before you. The title of the image on the left is the mirror of the whole of nature and the image of art. In a cloud at the top of the universal order resides God, here expressed as the Old Testament divine name, those Hebrew letters yod heh vav -He, which spell the fourfold name of Yahweh or Jehovah. Beneath God stands the female figure of universal nature or the world soul, the anima mundi, who provides the subtle underpinning for the physical world. She is linked to God above by a chain, just as she is linked to the ape of nature below. These chains represent the hierarchical connecting ladder which exists between the upper and lower realms. Such a hierarchical order also emanates outward from the central circle of the terrestrial realm through the celestial to the super celestial realms. This medieval and Renaissance model of the cosmos proceeds from the earthly realm to the celestial realm comprised of the planets and stars. 
Beyond this lies the super celestial or divine realm. It is here, as depicted on the right, that we find the hierarchy of angelic consciousness, from archangels to seraphim, which lead to the divine mind above. All of these are but rungs upon the invisible ladder that leads from earth to the eternal worlds beyond. The ascending levels of this angelic order were described by the sixth century philosopher, Pseudo Dionysius, in his book, The Celestial Hierarchy. Dionysius was an influential Christian author who was deeply influenced by Platonism, perhaps being a one-time pupil of the Neoplatonist Proclus. Such a hierarchical angelic conception influenced Dante in his description of the wonders of paradise in his epic poem, The Divine Comedy. Here we have Gustave Doré's visual depictions of this elevated angelic realm. The preceding ideas and images provide a broader context for understanding Jacob's angelic ladder. For this ladder provides not merely a metaphor for the angelic consciousness, but serves to represent the gradation of eternal ideas, which reach from the bounds of earth to the radiant heights of the absolute. Thus, it is understandable that one name used to describe the vast mystical cosmological system of the Hebrew Kabbalah is the ladder of lights. As seen in my painting on the right, the 10 Sephiroth or archetypal spheres which compose the Kabbalistic tree of life may be understood as luminous receptacles of those eternal ideas which form the conceptual underpinning of the whole of the created universe. In mystical Kabbalistic practice during one's spiritual evolution, one climbs up the conceptual steps of the Sephiroth as if rungs on a ladder until reaching the highest realms of the absolute. This relationship between Jacob's ladder and Moses' emanational tree of life will become clearer when we examine Moses' revelatory encounters with God, with the divine name and the Legoic tablets of creation. On the left, the painting of Jacob's dream by William Blake provides another vision of that twisting heavenly ladder which, like the spiraling genetic DNA chain in the biological realm, provides an evolutionary model of the soul's ascent. Having set the conceptual groundwork for the idea of Jacob's ladder, we now return to Chagall and Jacob's dream. The number and diversity of the following images indicate the importance of this motif to the spiritual and creative life of Marc Chagall, whose artistic work was often tied to his rich Jewish heritage. In these two paintings, we find new spherical shapes introduced into the narrative. On the left, we also find the red rooster, which is a recurrent motif in many Chagall artworks. The rooster has been variously interpreted as representing Chagall's inner spirit, his ego, or a symbol of fertility. In this case, the rooster stands between the reclining Jacob and the upper image of him from the Bible wrestling with the shadowy man or angel, as it is variously interpreted. I view the episode of Jacob wrestling with the angel as a representation of an early stage in his spiritual quest, where the aspirant must often deal with those aspects of the psyche, which resist the sacrifices that must be made in the course of the spiritual journey. Contrasted with that tumultuous scene is the sphere of welcoming angels found on the upper right. Between Jacob and the angels is a white-robed holy man, perhaps Moses, holding the Torah, representing the path of spiritual surrender, divine wisdom, and the higher mystical law, which leads one up the stairway to heaven. 
In this respect, the rooster could represent Jacob's ego or selfhood, being turned from inner struggle to the way of sacrifice, higher wisdom, and divine love. In the painting on the right, we see another sphere, this one more nightlike. Rising from Jacob's heart is a fiery or blossoming tree. It is this tree that leads to the heights of divine wisdom and to the one holy name from which all things spring. It is from such a tree, as we will see. Moses received his own revelation concerning the hierarchical truths of nature and the universe. Chagall here provides an expanded version of Jacob's dream. On the left stands Jacob before the celestial ladder. To the right hovers a luminous fourfold angel holding a candlelit menorah. Behind the angel hangs Jesus on a four-armed cross. In the lower right corner is the faint scene of Abraham and the sacrifice of Isaac. The figures of Jesus and Abraham here refer to those ultimate sacrifices that the spiritual aspirant must make on the road to divine ascent. In addition to his many paintings, Chagall also created a stained glass version of Jacob's dream for the Cathedral Saint Etienne in Metz. Next to Jacob's portrayal on the left stands a window that is devoted to the theme of Moses and the burning bush. This incident, as described in Exodus, tells of God coming before Moses and revealing himself in the flames of a bush or tree. It is here that God reveals his divine name to his devoted servant. Beholding this flaming miracle, Moses said to the first divinity, I am going to the sons of Israel, and I will say to them, the God of fathers has sent me to you. Now they may say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, I am has sent me to you. In other words, the name of the one first cause is being, pure unconditioned being or the great I am. This being may also be understood as the unmanifest logos, that timeless pattern or word from which all creation is formed. In my painting of Moses and the burning bush, the holy name of the first cause rises above all. Three words are uttered, Eye, Esher, Eye, meaning I am that I am. Many scholars have said that the name I am given by God to Moses was the Tetragrammaton, that fourfold Hebrew word composed of the letters yod heh vav -He. Throughout the Old Testament, the name of God was most often spelled yod heh vav -He, or Yahweh, though this name, out of respect, would be substituted by other godly names such as Adonai, Elohim, or Hashem. As the divine name serves as the model of first cause from which all creation is derived, the four letters of the name may also be used to return the human soul to God. The burning bush I here identify with the Kabbalistic tree of life. Thus have I placed the diagrammatic tree of life at the center of the burning bush. At the top of the tree lies the first sephira of Kether, known as the crown of creation. It is here that the original expression of the logos appears from the vast expanse of primal light, which is to say, pure being as illumination. I interpret Moses' encounter with the burning bush as representing that revelation he received concerning universal creation, originating with the first word or name of God, then progressing down Jacob's stairway of cosmic emanation. This progression of the divine name is shown in my illustrations depicting this hierarchical descent of the universal word. Thus did Moses, like Jacob, have his own vision of the hierarchical emanational nature of universal creation. This vision was reinforced and expanded upon when Moses received the tables of the law on Mount Sinai during the Exodus. 
Such a model of creation of universal generation from the matrix seed of the Tetragrammaton was expressed in that preeminent Kabbalistic text, the Zohar. When the world was created, it was the supernal letters that brought into being all the works of the lower world, literally after their own pattern. Hence, whoever has a knowledge of them and is observant of them is beloved both on high and below. It is through the application of this fourfold word that the spiritual aspirant may achieve divine union, climbing up the ladder of lights to the original source of all. This flood engraving illustrates that hierarchical ascent, which may be used by the mystic to return to the one. Analogously, in the Kabbalah, there are understood to be four realms composing the cosmic hierarchy. These are, at the top of the Sephirothic ladder, Atzaluth, or the realm of causes, then Bariah, then Yetzirah, and lastly is the earthly kingdom, or Aziah. These realms, of course, correspond in sequence to the four letters of the divine name. The method of using the letters of the Tetragrammaton for mystical ascent and divine return was described by the great 13th century mystic, Abraham Abu Lafia. It is by adhering to the name of God that one may gain an understanding of divine truth. For when your mind comes to cleave to God's mind, which gives you knowledge, your mind must remove from itself the yoke of the alien ideas, apart from his idea which connects between you and him by his honored and awesome name. Abu Lafia even described the ascendant power of the letters of God's name in terms of the intellective essence of the angels, reminding one again of the hierarchical angelic vision of Jacob. The letters, without any doubt, are the root of all wisdom and knowledge, and they appear in the prophetic vision as though they are opaque bodies speaking to man face to face, saying most of the intellective comprehensions and they appear as if pure living angels. Here we see two versions by Chagall of the prophet Elijah's ascent into heaven in the fiery chariot of God. The Zohar asserts that Elijah achieved his divine ascent through the power of the divine name or word. Then the letters of the divine name that abide in the ethereal space soar upwards. This is indicated in the words that Obadiah spoke to Elijah, for the spirit of the Lord will carry thee. For it was that name by which Elijah flew upwards, and it is that name that rules the ethereal space. The letters then of the name fly upwards with the prayer utterance in company with the chief who holds the keys of the ether. The transformative illuminative power of the divine name for the mystic is proclaimed by Abraham Abu Lafia. And indeed, Yahweh is his vision. That is, that he gazes at the letters of this name and at their ways, and all hidden things are revealed to him. It is interesting to note in this painting by Rembrandt, the staircase which leads to a spiral ascent reminiscent of Blake's painting of Jacob's Ladder. This painting has been variously assigned the name the philosopher or the Kabbalist. In this respect, one could easily perceive this painting as a representation of a man such as the great Kabbalistic philosopher and mystic, Abraham Abu Lafia. Here we have two Chagall paintings, which represent Moses' mountaintop visions the first atop Mount Horeb, and the second, on the right, atop Mount Sinai. On the left, Chagall places the Tetragrammaton in a circle atop the burning tree. The sphere may be understood as being the first Sephira of Keter, or the crown of being. Here, the Tetragrammaton exists, but in potential, 
before its utterance as the spoken or manifest Logos word. It is on Mount Sinai that Moses received the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments may be understood as representing the Ten Sephiroth on the Tree of Life as they manifest throughout the physical and moral spheres. They signify that second expression of the Tetragrammaton word in its spoken or material form. In the juxtaposition of these two paintings, I see the green angel on the left as symbolizing the spirit of the Tetragrammaton in its manifesting form, as the color green in hermetic symbolism represents the earthly or material principle. On the right, Moses' face is filled with this same green, materializing spirit as he looks up into the mysteries of the Lord. It is important to note that according to that supreme Kabbalistic text, the Zohar, the Ten Commandments were not the first or most profound of Moses' revelations on Mount Sinai. Upon his initial ascent up Mount Sinai, Moses received the first tables of the law. According to the Zohar, these divine tablets were made of sapphire. They were formed before the creation of the world and contained the first cosmic laws of the universe which are the emanational Logoic edicts of creation. These fourfold matrical laws were the first thoughts of God, or in the words of the Gnostic Apocryphon, the completely perfect forethought. They provided the unmanifest seed pattern for all creation and can be equated with the fourfold name of God. The crystalline nature of these divine tablets reflect the quasi-numerical or geometric character of the primal seed matrix or logos. The Zohar states that the writing on these tablets was transparent. It later states that the writing was like black fire on white fire. Metaphorically, this transparent writing refers to the unmanifest nature of the seed matrix. The transparent writing, as well as the black fire, also refers to the hidden nature of the secret doctrine and to the oral tradition of the Kabbalah. These paintings by Chagall provide expressions of the two phases of the divine name and the Mosaic law. On the left, during the tablet's original transmission, the scene is illuminated in white and gold, while the earthborn followers glow a fiery red, with Moses freely flying to the elevated light. On the right, with reception of the Ten Commandments, the scene is filled with darkness, the followers being cast in the shadows, and Moses seemingly affixed to the darkened earth, just as God's hands protrude from a blackened cloud. This painting by Cosimo Roselli provides a tableau of Moses' receipt of the law and his subsequent smashing of the tablets. When Moses first descended from Mount Sinai with the sapphire tablet, he saw the people of Israel worshiping a brazen calf. The prophet then realized that his people were not ready to receive the deeper secrets of the Kabbalah. They were unprepared to learn God's first, more abstract teaching. They still worshiped their false idols, which is to say the more literal materialistic form of God. They believed that the outer form the surface mask or anthropomorphic visage was the real essence of divinity. They were incapable of comprehending the true and everlasting God, that God of the higher mysteries, a God of mind, metaphor, ineffable spirit, and boundless love. Because of their limited literal understanding, Moses was forced to destroy the original cosmic commandments. After shattering the sapphire tablet, Moses returned to the mountaintop. There he recorded on plain stone the second form of the law, which is the literal or moral law. These two forms of the law reflect the two levels of spiritual initiation, known as the lesser and the greater mysteries. The second form of the law, known as the Ten Commandments, provided the basic behavioral code to guide the faithful. The Ten Commandments have been described as laws of prohibition and denial. They prescribe strict behavioral mandates imposed by the institutions of religion and state. 
they are set in distinction to the first law and those mystical ideals of affirmation and creative freedom, which constitute the inner world. If one lives in complete identification with these first spiritual ideals, inspired by the direct presence of the Godhead, then the Ten Commandments are rendered superfluous. For one's every act is driven by the higher principles of unity, love, harmlessness, and the common good. In the Ten Commandments lie the fundamental moral code, which must be followed during the first stage of initiation, preparation. These commandments correspond to the preparatory lessons that were found in the ancient lesser mysteries of Eleusis, as well as in the Pythagorean initiatory order. Only after one has mastered the initial preparation and purification stages may one enter the greater mysteries and its final initiatory stage, perfection. It is at this point that one may climb the highest rungs of the, that great stairway known as the Ladder of Lights. The secret doctrine of Israel, the Kabbalah, has been referred to as the science of perfection. The Kabbalistic tree of life, like Jacob's ladder, provides a model for our divine ascent. And when the spiritual initiate passes through the final threshold of perfection, the fourfold law or logos, that tetragrammaton is divine name, may be revealed in its original mystical form as the human soul at last experiences the light and bliss of divine reunion.